Welcome to Finding God from Thoughts in Solitude by the Rev. Thomas Merton, Vegetarian, Part 1 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. The Rev. Thomas Merton, an important Catholic mystic and spiritual thinker, was born in 1915 to a New Zealand father and an American mother. The many life situations he encountered in his youth led him to explore religion and spirituality, and eventually to devote his life to God by becoming a monk and later a deacon at the Abbey of Gethsemane, a part of the Order of Trappists in Kentucky, USA. He also enjoyed living alone in a hermitage in the monastery's wilderness area. During his monastic life, Thomas Merton developed his writing talent by translating religious texts and writing biographies. He also penned poetry as well as books and articles on topics ranging from spirituality to social justice and peace. One of Merton's most famous statements was, For me to be a saint means to be myself. Therefore, the problem of sanctity and salvation is in fact the problem of finding out who I am and of discovering my true self. He also said, We are living in a world that is absolutely transparent, and God is shining through it all the time. This is not just a nice story or a fable, it is true. Believing in the equality of all religions, Thomas Merton became deeply interested in Eastern traditions in the later years of his life. He also held lively discourses with His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. Today, the life and works of the wise reverend are still studied at the Thomas Merton Center in Kentucky, USA and the International Thomas Merton Society. Today, we will present excerpts from Thomas Merton's book, Thoughts in Solitude, where the wise reverend explains how we can be closer to God. Part 2 the Love of Solitude Chapter 4 A man knows when he has found his vocation when he stops thinking about how to live and begins to live. Thus, if one is called to be a solitary, he will stop wondering how he is to live and start living peacefully only when he is in solitude. But if one is not called to a solitary life, the more he is alone, the more will he worry about living and forget to live. When we are not living up to our true vocation, thought deadens our life, or substitutes itself for life, or gives in to life so that our life drowns out our thinking and stifles the voice of conscience. When we find our vocation, thought and life are one. Suppose one has found completeness in his true vocation. Now everything is in unity, in order, at peace. Now work no longer interferes with prayer or prayer with work. Now contemplation no longer needs to be a special state that removes one from the ordinary things going on around him, for God penetrates all. One does not have to think of giving an account of oneself to anyone but Him. Chapter 5 it is necessary that we find the silence of God not only in ourselves but also in one another. Unless some other man speaks to us in words that spring from God and communicate with the silence of God in our souls, we remain isolated in our own silence, from which God tends to withdraw. For inner silence depends on a continual seeking, a continual crying in the night, a repeated bending over the abyss. If we cling to a silence, we think we have found forever. We stop seeking God and the silence goes dead within us. A silence in which He is no longer sought ceases to speak to us of Him. A silence from which He does not seem to be absent dangerously threatens His continued presence. For He is found when He is sought, and when He is no longer sought, He escapes us. He is heard only when we hope to be fulfilled. We cease to listen. He ceases to speak. His silence ceases to be vivid and becomes dead, even though we recharge it with the echo of our own emotional noise. Chapter 6 Lord, my heart is not exalted. Holy Bible, Psalms 130 verse 1 Both pride and humility seek interior silence. Pride, by a forced immobility, 
seeks to imitate the silence of God, but the silence of God is the perfection of pure life and the silence of pride is the silence of death. Humility seeks silence not in inactivity but in ordered activity, in the activity that is proper to our poverty and helplessness before God. Humility goes to pray and finds silence through words. But because it is natural for us to pass from words to silence and from silence to words, humility is in all things silent. Even when it speaks, humility listens. The words of humility are so simple, so gentle, and so poor that they find their way without effort to the silence of God. Indeed, they are the echo of His silence, and as soon as they are spoken, His silence is already present in them. Pride is afraid to go out of itself for fear of losing what it has produced within itself. The silence of pride is therefore menaced by the action of charity. But since humility finds nothing within itself, for humility is its own silence, it cannot lose in peace and silence by going out to listen to others or to speak to them for the love of God. In all things, humility is silent and at rest, and even the labor of humility is rest. It is not speaking that breaks our silence, but the anxiety to be heard. The words of the proud man impose silence on all others, so that he alone may be heard. The humble man speaks only in order to be spoken to. The humble man asks nothing but alms, then waits and listens. Silence is ordered to the ultimate summing up in words of all we have lived for. We receive Christ by hearing in the word of faith. We work out our salvation in silence and hope, but sooner or later comes the time when we must confess Him openly before men, then before all the inhabitants of heaven and earth. If our life is poured out in useless words, we will never hear anything, will never become anything, and in the end, because we have said everything before we had anything to say, we shall be left speechless at the moment of our greatest decision. I have believed, therefore have I spoken. Holy Bible, Psalms 115 verse 1 But silence is ordered to that final utterance. It is not an end in itself. Our whole life is a meditation of our last decision, the only decision that matters, and we meditate in silence. Yet we are bound to some extent to speak to others, to help them see their way to their own decision, to teach them Christ. In teaching them Christ, our very words teach them a new silence, the silence of the resurrection. In that silence they have formed and prepared so that they also may speak what they have heard. I have believed, therefore have I spoken. Holy Bible, Psalms 115 verse 1. For more information about Thomas Merton, vegetarian, please visit merton.org. Don't be near a vegan. You'll be infected with a loving heart condition. Serene viewers, we thank you for your company today on Words of Wisdom. 